Hi, Valeria. <laughs> Hello. Um, today we are just having a conversation. I met Valeria on uh, the Awakening from the Meaning Crisis Discord server uh, more than three years ago already. Oh, maybe three years. And um, I explored the subject of human connection, conversation, understanding each other. And today, Valeria will help me to understand myself and what is going on. It's a vulnerable process, and uh, I'm extremely grateful to you for helping me. Thank you for trusting me and allowing me to get a peek into your beautiful soul. So what do you know about what is going on? <laughs> what do you need to understand? Yesterday when we were talking after meditation, you asked me, why am I doing what I'm doing? The videos and... And I don't really have an answer to that, uh, so really. I wrote in the mission statement that I'm trying to understand. And that's as far as I, <laughs> I understand. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to know um, what is going on around me, uh, trying to understand people, the world, without uh, preconceived notions, but see it as it is. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, exploring conversations with others listening to them to their point of view seems like a good direction what is difficult when we started you you compared the true, the good, and the beautiful to something that is there that felt very difficult. What do you see? Mm. Yeah. That's like that jumping into deep waters. I during the meditation right now before the I don't know if it's meditation. What was it that you did? The practice where we pay attention to everything? A bit of mindfulness practice, yeah. So that mindfulness practice, you said, um, look, the, look at the surroundings and pay attention to the most beautiful thing you see in your immediate surrounding. And I started focusing on that and this beautiful thing, how it grows and encompasses me. And... Uh, for some reason, it jumped to the uh, messages that my mom sent me yesterday. And so she sent me a video of my school without windows. And uh, a woman who is, uh, I think she's my age, I kind of recognize the name. And the way she looked like, uh, it's like, and she's working for that school now. And I kind of, always think oh the war had a toll on me and like the war the war let me scarred and i have seen actual person who is there in her immediate surrounding was uh, like at the background was the school i went to as a child and she barely could speak and she she's like the, the school is with short walls and and then she's like, no, no, we are trying to, like, we are, we are locals, we are, like, trying to, whoever remained in the village, trying to mend the, the room. And I, I just, for some reason, thought, okay, what is the most beautiful thing in her surrounding? And it helps me to appreciate the moment what is here right now. But I can't forget what I have, like, I can't ignore the fact that it's happening. Mm. And uh, yeah. 
so that that is what the thing that made me cry before this recording do you want to give some context for somebody that might not know where you where your school is and what is going on over there so my school is uh, in a village at the south of ukraine and it's, it's like about 30 kilometers for people who know kilometers from Kherson. Extremely beautiful village, like such a wonderful place to grow up in. It um, When I was uh, living there as a child, it, it had like about 5,000 people in it. A school, a theater. Even even local museum. And like in February 2022, uh, Ukraine uh, was uh, occupied, attacked. And I have talked about it in videos before, but and there is so much of that in the news. It feels like uh, everybody is already tired of hearing about it. And um, I don't, I don't want to uh, bore people with those stories. I do not feel like, do not feel like it's relevant to others. It's, like it's relevant to me because I'm personally affected, but it's a, it's not a thing for people who aren't affected because uh, what people can stop it? No, they can't. I cannot stop it. And so I, I live with this understanding that there is like very little I can do actually. Like Um, yeah you don't need to mm. be sorry for crying over your country being at war and, <laughs> and your family <laughs> and the place where you grew up being destroyed if, if people cannot cry about that then where is our humanity I, you, yeah, go ahead. We can talk about also why do you, why is it important not to, because we were talking about yesterday that crying and YouTube videos can get you an audience and uh, uh, seems like something easy to explore. Yeah. I, um, and also, hatred is also very easy to explore on YouTube. Yeah. With crying. Like, there is a simple reason, uh, the surface explanation of why I really don't want to cry on YouTube. It's my mom and grandma, they watch my YouTube. So, like, I don't want to see them to see me cry. I have seen a woman cry because a bird was standing on one leg, and then and then she was crying for half an hour about the the bird who is standing on one leg, and then the bird was just like put down the other leg because it has the capacity to hide it. <laughs> <laughs> and then she was like, "That bird, that stupid bird, had two legs." <laughs> So she saw a bird on one leg, just like in the wind on one leg. And she was like, that poor bird on one leg in the wind, <laughs> like me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry. It reminds me of a child that cried for 15 minutes, 20 <laughs> minutes, because she found out that her big brother is going to grow. <laughs> going where? <laughs> her, her, her little brother was going to grow. 
he was not going to stay a baby forever. And oh my God. <laughs> because she wanted him to stay a baby forever. No. <laughs> oh my God. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that's love. Yeah. And so I know you for what? A few years now. And we meet every Friday. And I have seen you going through all of that. And the difficulties with your family. And the fear of them escaping. And the floods. And people getting trapped. And the despair of being able to do so little and the yeah. strength with which you have faced it all. That practice where uh, I can be surrounded by people who absolutely don't have the same experience I do they do not boil in the same hot water. And even once a week, having conversations with them, being able to listen to what they go through in their lives and to kind of compare actually helped me through a lot. It did. And I'm really grateful. That's that that gatherings you have they are they're important so thank you for, for thank holding you for me and telling your stories i remember you telling stories about chicken and <laughs> oh there was there was a, a story about chickens being freed because the place was invaded or something yeah so <laughs> the story is about chickens. Uh, the Kherson got occupied immediately and the people, um, people, soldiers blocked the roads. So the help from, uh, and the weed, let's say food, they could not come from uh, Ukrainian side. And basically, how it happens in occupation, um, people need to be isolated. So people started being isolated and the only road to uh, Ukraine and the food into Ukraine could have come only from Crimea region, which is also occupied. And so it's basically, they cut off the help from Ukraine kind of, and the only help could come from the South, uh, from R Russia, I mean, through Crimea. And uh, people started uh, rebelling. They were like, no, no, we will not take the, the food and we will not take the, uh, because like guys like free us, we want to belong, we want to be Ukraine. And it was kind of this, um, there was this tactic, you know. And the chickens, so the, the chickens, the chicken farm, it was like, I think four million chicken there. Like it's a huge farm, like a massively huge farm. Um, they run out of food like pretty quickly uh, within, uh, I think, six weeks or something. The chicken. Yeah, the chickens. And the risk was... Um, that Russians will not bring food to feed the chickens uh, and that the, all the birds will start dying out. It could have been uh, ecological catastrophe. So um, the management of that factory, uh, they decided to uh, give away the chicken to people. And my sister took in, uh, I think she took in 10 chickens. I don't remember the exact number, L alive, living chickens. And uh, there were like those funny videos uh, how she's uh, accustoming them. They were caged chickens and she was accustoming them to the garden and to the land. And uh, the funny thing was that all of those chickens were caged chickens. <laughs> it kind of, because of the occupation, those chickens got free. 
and they could experience a life of a normal chicken. But most of those chickens were uh, killed and given to people as food to sustain, to, to feed them to also so that they can kind of feed themselves, uh, not die from hunger. It's difficult for me to imagine not having food. It's very difficult to for spoiled people like me who have 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 everything to imagine this kind of situation. That's not spoiled. That's normal. Just it's that's... lucky. Yeah, it's blessed. I think people who have food and all the condition, this is basic human normal needs that should be the baseline everything below the baseline is unfortunate um, yeah why do you put videos on youtube you told me yesterday a few things about why do you why are you on youtube so I, I started YouTube um, in April 2020. So when uh, the pandemic just began and people got isolated uh, at home. And I started videos on YouTube uh, going to the forest, uh, showing forest and birds and talking noticing the nature, like looking at the, at the texture of soil, uh, sandy soil, how the trees grow, the differences, like just, just exploring nature mm, and the seaside, plus um, poetry. So it's basically, uh, I, I had this idea of helping people uh, to, or to show an example how you can spend your time uh, if you are isolated from other people, how you can spend it um, good for your health, good, good for your um, creative mind as well. So I started doing poetry uh, with a friend uh, who was a poet and I started writing my own poetry too. And, um, so yeah, basically poetry and nature it was my big <laughs> insight on how people can spend their time because i have children and i would like them to spend the time like that this is what i want for uh, for kids to learn because it's so much different uh, on the internet on tiktok um, like there is this new trend that people are npcs when um, a person on a screen will do uh, will pretend to be a robot let's say for money so the audience will tip the money and the person on the screen will do whatever the audience asks them to do. And so kind of very simple transaction. And it seems to me that uh, that's not the way we should uh, evolve as people. Like I don't want my children to, oh, I don't need to uh, work on my psychological health. Uh, I don't need to work on my values if i can earn money just uh gesturing for other people uh, yeah so i had this naive idea that um, if i if i start that that trend it might take off and it's uh, so as a consequence uh, i just got friendships stronger friendship with few people who like me like nature like poetry and um, like conversations 
So conversations, poetry, and nature. Yay! And later animals came into equation. Because taking care of animals is also uh, a good example of uh, humanity. So right now, when the war started, I leaned more into conversations. I kind of started doing less of nature, less of poetry, less of music, and way more conversations. Because conversations um, became rigid, uh, negative on the internet. People thrive on... Uh, one opponent pinned against another opponent and they fight uh, and the audience will look at it who will win uh, like i think it's just like a month ago or something uh, they were gathering money for a debate with scientists and the politician and it was like scientists and the politician cannot have a proper debate actually those people, they operate in different realms even. And, but, but it was entertaining and for others. I, like, I do not operate in that uh, environment as well. So I, I want to, uh, to see proper conversations that are not made into shows for others something real mm -hmm. it's it's funny like you go for youtube uh, like people would go to youtube to like numb their mind with content uh, to forget about reality somehow to be thrown into different world and I actually do want uh, real world as it is, real conversations more on YouTube. So I started doing that. And again, as a consequence, uh, <laughs> just just uh, close connections with people, uh, friendships, that's what happened as a result. Um, it did not go really viral because... Uh, Conversations between people, they are time-specific, subject-specific. Uh, it's not uh, really entertaining too much. It's just like watching two people talk to each other. That's it. If, if we were uh, in a cage fight, having the same conversation, wow, that would be like way more interesting for people. But... I don't want to add to that culture. Mm -hmm. Even at the expense of uh, popularity of my YouTube. Mm -hmm. What do we want to see more in the world? Conversations. I want to see more in the world people cooperating with each other uh, as opposed to uh, competing with each other and respect people respecting each other um, each other's uh, ways of being it's like I noticed that trend uh, where somebody is educated differently than you, they have different culture, and they they feel like it's um, their moral duty to point a finger at somebody who is diverse and judge them, and like they feel like no, without judging the bad and the evil, I feel like I did not. Uh, that I'm not a good citizen and uh, yes there is a, a moment uh, an element of truth in there 
but um, uh, what I would add into this equation, understanding of of actually what is true, the good and the beautiful, what is actually right, not uh, the self bias that people repeat them because I believe like that. This means I'm. That's the only right way to do and to be in the world. Uh, yeah, understanding we are, we are all different. Uh, but you talked in one of your other videos about how difficult that can be in practice when it came to your friendship with your Russian friend, right? EM. Yeah, thank you for remembering that. So EM, she painted this painting and <laughs> she, she says it's me. Like, looks nothing like me. <laughs> yeah. uh, they're like, Mm. So I met her before the war, and the way she stood out to me from the crowd is um, she DM'd me with the information uh, that I need to correct myself. Uh, I was in a voice chat um, on Lex Friedman's server. There were like about 20 people in the chat. And also Lex was in there back in the time, back in the day when he was uh, active on Discord. And I was uh, talking about Dostoevsky and she was like, she DM'd me and said, listen, that book you mentioned, it's not Dostoevsky who wrote that book, correct yourself. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, that's so nice that she did not call me out publicly, but DM'd me and asked me to correct myself. And I thought it's, such a good uh, judge of her character. And at that moment, I decided that based on that one action, uh, she's she's amazing. Like she's, she's like uh, a good friend. And I, like we started talking and it turns out we have so much in common, even though she's a university professor in US, uh, she's right, but, um, yeah, we are friends till this day. And the war, uh, it was really difficult at the beginning, especially when I was reading all the news and I, I kind of uh, took in the hatred against uh, the nation that came and destroyed lives and destroyed just the beautiful land. Like all of that got ruined because they came in, like they became them others the and russians. the russians and uh, she was kind of uh, she was tainted by association she was one somehow of for, for me she was one of them yeah she was in my mind she was one of them not my friend but it lasted like two weeks i think that peak of hatred and she did not know like i i did not take it on her like my my decision was to figure it out in my own head come to terms with it uh, and not uh, hurt people that actually um, had been there for me in the past, not to make war ruin friendship. And so I had to kind of, for myself at least, rebuild it again. And it's worth it. Like it's worth, like the, it's worth to break through that um, illusion that, that, that another person is suddenly, uh, the russian or another person is suddenly on the left or on the right break through that illusion and see another person for who they are a person um, and 
knowing that is not enough. Doing in it. Uh, acting it out. That was important. So every day uh, at the beginning of war, when I would meet her, uh, even when I was like full on uh, upset with Russians, I'm still am very much, but would remind myself. She's not the Russian, she's a person. See the person, do not see the, the box you put her in. Um, and it was difficult for me. So I understand now why people um, find it so difficult to, to kind of uh, hold hands with the opposite side. You know? I understand how difficult it is. It takes extreme amount of motivation and effort. And the only reason I had this motivation and effort is because she was my friend before the thing. Right. But did it change a little bit how you see the other Russians? Because there is one Russian that is not one of them. Can you, does that bridge help? Yes. That, uh, that one action with that one specific person helped me to see Russians um, as like, it was not, oh, she's not a Russian. No, mm -hmm. she is still very much Russian. Uh, and so the same rules applies to others. It's individuals. And I do meet um, Russians who full on do not understand uh, uh, my side or side of my family mm -hmm. and when I talked to them a little bit uh, more about it it seems like they cannot understand it because they are deeply internally motivated not to believe or excuse that this is happening because if they would see our side uh, they would uh, it, it would cause a big discomfort to them. So they're, they're motivated not to see it. They're motivated to see the good in their actions. They need it somehow. They need it yeah. desperately. They needed to believe that it's good. So there is this, unfortunately, this mechanism that people will believe in the thing they want to believe. If they would see you as people in the same way that you like to see you. Friend. Yeah. And I imagine that that's the message that you would like to to help people understand. Yes. That it's actually people, and it sounds so cliche when you say it. When we say it, doesn't it? Yes. It does. What changed? Just tell, just tell me. We can always add it later. Okay. What has changed? Mm. I was um, doing all of that, the conversations, the nature of videos, the YouTube content, uh, with that um, internal desire to actually do that bring the content into the world um, to inspire people to have conversations and it was very important for me uh, not to be corrupted by money not to be doing mm -hmm. that for likes for clicks for like not to be this gesture who is like Look at me doing the thing you pay for, like not to add this into the world, mm -hmm. not to reward it, let's say. To bring something that came from your heart and your soul and what was important to you. Uh, yeah. And only recently, um, when uh, <laughs> I needed actually uh, money to to help somebody, to save somebody. 
So in the wartime, uh, it's um, in order to get people from one place to the other place, uh, from, from a place of war into a place of kind of safety or place where there is less shooting, let's say. You need to hire a car, you need to like have connections and stuff like that. All of that requires money. So money got mixed into that equation. Um, on one side, to help others, now you need money to get things done. And combining those two ideas uh, is still difficult for me. It's like, I do not do things for money, but I do need money to help. To do the and, things that you want to do. <laughs> yes. And it seems obvious. And and uh, that definitely changed. So now I'm still in a process of uh, trying to merge the idea of how to earn money and still do the things I do. Conversations that aren't really like getting much traction because uh, I'm not a gesture, let's say. I, I don't know how to do this uh, show. They don't really feel like it's don't feel like it's a proper way to to have a conversation. Like it's it's a thing that I don't want my children to enact, mm -hmm. let's say. And so now no now I, I have this uh, choice, let's say. Am I continuing to do the proper conversation or I turn into a showman mm -hmm. so that I can uh, earn the money to help people, actually help people? Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday, um, one of the members from the Awakening from the Meaning Crisis Discord server, uh, he said, uh, well, in order to earn money, you just have to do what you do better, but you have to like be very much better. It's like, yeah, great advice, right? I I think in order to earn money the way others earn it, I need to be somebody else, mm -hmm. not myself. And yeah, so that's... <laughs> that's the dilemma. That's the dilemma. Like... I will not be corrupted by money was uh, was my kind of affirmation. And now, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how those two are connected. I do need money to help people. And then on the other side, I will not be corrupted by money. I will not sell my soul, let's say. So, yeah. <laughs> I remember that you used to be very uncomfortable when people gave you donations. It it was a shock uh, because um, I never received donations like all my life uh, because I had this internal. Um, idea that I will not be like helping others for money or doing things for money and then somebody gives me donations uh, I had to internally question myself because um, receiving a donation I felt like oh my god somebody took a little bit of the load from my shoulders I felt this gratitude because it actually did help. Uh, on the other hand, there is still this wiring. Uh, are you corrupted? Are you corrupted in my head? The question that keeps uh, kind of replay. And of course, it was uncomfortable because I had to um, explain myself. And I'm not used to that idea because it was a new idea to me i i just like each time the money idea of money would come up i would be like i don't want to think about that let me move on and i would think about something else but the moment it actually happened yeah i had to think about that 
And like by the way, thank you for people who gave me donations. Would you like people to give you donations? Uh, it's still hard, isn't it? <laughs> it still feels hard. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's like I uh, I would like to be able to help. Mm -hmm. I would like to to be able to uh, yes. It it oh my god! Uh, I have to I have to replay that answer. I have, I have an aim, that feeling of helplessness that I that I feel when I when I see the news and when I talk to my family. I have a comforting idea that when the war is over, I will help them to rebuild. And the donations. They are a part of that. They are necessary part of rebuilding a thing after a war. They are necessary part of sustaining this YouTube channel and sustaining what I'm doing at the moment. So I guess I'm starting to come to terms with it. Uh, I am happy when people give me donations. I'm, I'm grateful. What I'm hearing you say is that it doesn't feel like selling yourself anymore. It feels like recruiting help to do the thing that you think that you think it's important. Yes. It feels necessary. Mm -hmm. There is always this uh, this idea that I can do things I do better. And if I'm not uh, able to gather the donations to help uh, to rebuild, if I so the specific thing, if I will not gather the donation to help my family rebuild um, or to help rebuild the school, even that school, the one without windows. It's like I failed. So it feels like you failed if you cannot support your family through the, the virus. Yes. How is that to think about it right now? Sorry? How is that to, to think about it right now? What is present for you right now? I think right now is the first time I repeated uh, those words to myself. Um, it feels like I'm protecting myself from reality all the time. I'm not allowing myself to to get it to me. And making it say out loud made me uh, understand it a little bit. Still difficult to digest. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Valeria. It's my pleasure. And then what, what I'm thinking right now is that even if uh, uh, money doesn't come in that way, at least the clarity can find other ways. Yeah. What's, but sometimes what is the most important is to know is to not have that it's not be fighting against oneself and against the world and really yeah 
stop denying the reality, which is what I see you doing now. Coming out of denial very slowly. <laughs> or just, I mean, it is, you mentioned in the beginning that being weak and vulnerable was very difficult for you culturally, right? And realizing that you need other people's help is a weak and vulnerable position or vulnerable and feels weak. It actually takes a lot of courage, so I would not call it weak, but I imagine that it feels very vulnerable to realize that you cannot do it on your own. Yeah. I also imagine that it takes a lot of courage to face that. And yet you're doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that conversation, Valeria. Um, and thank you for helping me through those difficult times. Thank so. you for... Thank you for being real and strong and both in touch with the big global things of, uh, because everybody talks about the war in the Ukraine, but you talk about it from a place of, I mean, it is personal, but it's a, uh, a place of strength and really trying to connect the, the the global of the situation, the, the universal to the personal, to the, the, the thing in the moment. It's very inspiring for me. And you talk a lot about the discord and the, the community there and the practices that we do. And the thing that I like the most about us is that we're really trying to understand the true, the good and the, the, good and the beautiful, to try to understand how to connect with it, how to keep in touch with it. and act from that place in those difficult situations where it's not obvious and we, where we don't know that we have, if we are just selling ourselves or if we're just connecting to the feeling that we cannot do this alone. Those are things that are universal but very difficult to, to deal with. You have often showed me the, the strength and the willingness to learn to willingness to pursue what is good for real not in the blah 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 realm of uh, uh, world, words and ideas but in the real of the situation how how can i act from the yeah from the most virtuous place here and they're constantly trying to get better at it constantly trying to stay real and to understand it and to communicate and to help people understand it and to put it on the internet, the, the, the place for people trying to understand that together. So thank you. Thank you. Wow, linking to the truth and the beautiful. <laughs> no, that, that thing where people link to the truth and the beautiful and it it is compared to what is now somehow 